Donald Trump is set to meet with President Obama at the White House on Thursday. He's already begun sketching out his cabinet and in his victory speech began the work of reconciliation. I pledge to every citizen of our land that I will be president for all Americans. And this is so important to me. For those who have chosen not to support me in the past, of which there were a few people, <laughs> I'm reaching out to you for your guidance and your help so that we can work together and unify our great country. CBSN political contributors Leslie Sanchez and Nomiki Const are here. Leslie is a Republican strategist. Nomiki is a Democratic strategist and host of The Filter on Sirius XM Radio. Ladies, let's begin with you, Leslie. We heard Donald Trump reach out to those who may not have supported him during the election. What did you make of that pitch? I think it's exactly the right tone. Um, now, the real, the big question, I think many, certainly Democrats and, and uh, uh, establishment Republicans who did not come on board to support Donald Trump were wondering is what is his tone going to be like? Is it going to be bringing people together, unifying the party? How is he going to be in terms of relations with Speaker Ryan? And is he going to be accepting this kind of new mantle of governance and leadership? And I think he struck the right tone. And I think more importantly, Hillary Clinton did. Uh, she really set an example um, was extremely gracious, magnanimous. Um, she definitely talked about the power of women in this election and, and the role model and kind of enjoyed being the champion or the honor of being the champion for young girls and women. These are very good first steps for a first day into the unknown. <laughs> and I think that's kind of how all of us feel. <laughs> unknown go, is right. Yeah. Baby steps <laughs> every day coming together, and uh, it's, it's exactly the right start. Uh, Nomi, let me ask you. You were a Bernie Sanders supporter. We mm -hmm. saw what happened during the Democratic convention. People were openly booed. Uh, I wonder what your thoughts are about whether Hillary Clinton was able to fully get Bernie Sanders supporters behind her. She did. She, she did. She got the majority of progressives. She got the majority of millennials. Uh, where, I, with one exception, white working class men and women. And that's the problem. And she knew that when she looked at the map of, in Michigan back in the spring. She knew that when she looked at the map uh, last night, that those states that she didn't get a win in were states that Bernie Sanders did very well in. And so it wasn't a secret. It wasn't some sort of, um, they had the numbers in their face. Not only do they have the numbers in their face, they had the Sanders team delivering them the numbers saying, you have to take this seriously. You have to take Wisconsin seriously. You know, it's millennials turned out uh, Latinos didn't turn out in the numbers that they wanted, despite registration, um, historic registration re numbers. Uh, African Americans didn't turn out the numbers they wanted. But this is something I think that we should keep in mind here. The Democratic Party, I think, has lost its way. We talked about this in the primary, but they've been in denial. We've lost over 1,200 seats in the last decade alone. We've raised more money than the history of the Democratic Party in the last two years alone. And we look at the presidency, we've always said, oh, that map, that map is so, the presidential map is always good for Democrats. We happen to have a presidential candidate in 2008 who was Barack Obama, an extraordinary leader. He gave great speeches, you know, he, he could bring crowds together, but he was running six weeks after the economy crashed uh, against an incredibly unpopular presidential record for, for uh, President Bush. He had John McCain, who wasn't running the operation he needed, and the Iraq War was, uh, was right there as well. And that was what took him to that level, the, the Obama coalition. She was a pre-recession candidate responsible, partly responsible, for the economic condition that those white working class voters are in today. And I don't know how she would have made that up. I think it was a Democratic Party failure. I said it six months ago when I was in the Bernie Sanders campaign. I say it today. And now all those people in the Democratic Party have nowhere to go. And there's definitely definitely going to be a political revolution because this strategy is not working for us. How do they fix that? Uh, they bring a new leadership. They, are, they have to be more inclusive. They have to open up the primaries. Uh, they have to get rid of this patronage system that we have. There's a whole lot of institutional support there that's supporting candidates that raise a lot of money, don't get elected. We don't support people on the ground. We spend way too much money on advertising. We're not spending it on field. We don't have money going to the state parties. We have a lot of problems. And a lot of those problems were orchestrated and arranged and designed by the Democratic Party leadership of Tim Kaine. So to see him at the top of the ticket, I'm going to get passionate about this because you know what? I can say it now. The reality is the Clinton campaign failed, and they failed because they didn't see the numbers that were right in front of their face that were being told by everybody, including people in their own campaign. And it was a $3 billion campaign 
That's what it was, a $3 billion campaign, and we didn't get the Senate seats we needed, we don't have state houses, we don't have anything on the map, even though our country is more progressive than it's ever been. The Democratic Party needs to be reformed tomorrow. We'll see what changes come of that. Whew, she's uh, ready to play. Ah, right, let, right. let me ask you, though, Leslie. I'm I really just want to let her repeat that statement. <laughs> we'll just, I'll just leave it there. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you about the playbook here for Donald Trump, because, mm -hmm. of course, we have said this so many times, conventional wisdom time and time again about what works for a political strategy was basically upended during this election cycle. Was that because the need for a playbook wasn't there because it was Donald Trump? Mm -hmm. Or is it that the playbook itself needs to be rewritten? It's a little bit of both, um, honestly, Elaine, because it, the, the celebrity status around Donald Trump, you can't deny that flying around the Iowa, you know, uh, the uh, Iowa fair with your own helicopter, you mm -hmm. know, giving people free rides. <laughs> it was just like a circus <laughs> routine um, in terms of how this primary started. And people, I, I keep going back to Iowa, like America's heartland, because you had young students in line to, you know, taking time off school so they can go see him. It was a six to one favorite early on July of last summer and it never dwindled. You had very, uh, you had Eastern uh, counties that were extremely blue that were very much in favor of Donald Trump. And all, a lot of that had to do with, they they felt that a lot of, of uh, the red states in the middle who we've talked about felt ignored, really felt that he spoke their language when it came to immigration reform, when he talked about trade and jobs, dis, you know, dispersing and leaving kind of America's heartland and going to foreign countries. And when he did raise the issue of these Obama premiums, which were skyrocketing, and that trifecta was the perfect message for him. So he could discount all the advertising. We're talking about the $3 billion campaign. Yes, he had his own campaign plan. Yes, he put his own money in. That actually gave him credibility early on. He didn't look like he was bought by Wall hmm. Street or the special interests. We forgot about that. I'm self-financing. I'm not taking anybody's money until he saw the power, which you have to give to Barack Obama, started a lot of that with the small, you know, and Bernie Sanders with the small donations, the little $3 donations, $5, $20, you know, where people were committing not only their time, but their money. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's transformational. That's such a populist movement. So we used to say his Twitter account mm -hmm. and his tweeting was able to close the, the money gap that he didn't have to raise for advertising. Mm -hmm. So it was a very different campaign, you have to say, for Donald Trump, but it was right for that candidate. It also exposed how extremely weak the rest of the Republicans were. None of them could take him on uh, on any of the issues with more money, more inclusive message, more experience, because it was about leadership and strength and style over establishment and kind of somebody who knows the ropes. Yeah. So right now it's about balancing the two. All right. I think there'll be a lot of examination on both sides. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Election cycle. <laughs> All right. Leslie Sanchez and Amiki Kanz, thank you both so much. Thank you.